Okay, thank you very much. We are really pleased and we thank you very much for the invitation. We are a group of cardiac surgeons in Colombia. The capital of Colombia is Bogota, as well some of you know. And we are doing a lot of these minimal invasive techniques uh, with conventional instruments in the real world. That's what, why we are here and we are really glad to share our job with us. So the theme of this uh, Congress is the high advances evolutions, advancements and vision trends in cardiology. And we are truly believers that these kind of techniques uh, are part of, the, of, this, of this phrase. As a mode of introduction, uh, in our country and in cardiac surgery, there are a lot of contexts, different contexts, different complexities in terms of the, the patients, uh, their comorbidities, in terms of the kind of surgery that we need to, to, to practice on them, a lot of scenarios, different people with different budgets in terms of the of the of the, of the patient and, and its family, and the burden of all the things that cardiac ischemic surgery uh, belongs and gives to. There are a lot of tools, actually, uh, conventional tools, minimal invasive tools, a lot of kind of treatments, a lot of uh, kind of uh, techniques that we need to be uh, really uh, used to, to them and, and to practice on the patient to give them better results. So we are developing a, an innovative surgical technique with lower associated risks in terms of the, the surgery itself, uh, offering complete revascularization. Our, our techniques routinely, we do a left mini thoracotomy by the four or fifth uh, inch crystal space, and we perform multi arterial grafts without manipulating the aorta. Uh, we think that this technique is, is offers better results than the conventional ones in, ter in terms of the of sparing the sternum incision. The coronary artery disease, the ischemic disease, as you will know, is a really important tools in the treatment as the surgery as well as other kind of treatments but surgery uh, is one of the of the tools it's it's a big 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 tool in the in the treatment and it is frequently compared with percutaneous or medical interventions uh, those conventional techniques the, the sternum uh, techniques with, with, the, with the south the sternum uh, have greater number of neurological bleeding, infection, and longer recovery time compared with the percutaneous and mostly medical interventions. So this is why we believe that develop novel techniques with less complications is uh, it's our job as cardiac surgeon, as cardiac surgeons. This is the first uh, series of patients in our country uh, with this technique. And we believe this the, the learning curve is not so hard. It is important to say that we are young surgeons. We are about uh, 10, 7, and 8 years from the, the post of graduation, and, and we are doing this. From 2020, we began our program of minimally invasive uh, revascularization with two patients that year. Uh, that's maybe an effect of the COVID. Uh, in 2021, there were 12 patients. Uh, last year, 2022, 40 patients. And at the moment, we are this year going to 31 patients, believing that this number is going to be bigger and bigger enough. We're going to talk about the technical descriptions, how we make this intervention, what kind of graft we used, the number of bypasses that you can do with this technique, the time patients spend in the hospital, the complications rate, and how the patients going after they go out of the hospital. This is uh, a little just a background of our, of our peritop technique. We perform a left knee thoracotomy by the fourth or fifth inch quarter in coastal space. It depends on the anatomy and the topography of the patient, as well as uh, the planeation. Looking the angiogram, looking the, the x-ray and all the exams that we used to order for those patients. Our conducts, we, we are at the same, we are truly believers that arteries are better than veins. 
So we use the, the left internal mammary artery and we use the radial artery. All the patients have allen tests, radiological allen tests and clinical allen tests to see if we can just harvest the radial artery. But this is our two conduits, uh, arterial conduits uh, with ligma and radial. We perform a, uh, a wide anastomosis to, the, anastomosis to the radial to the lima. Uh, in the vast majority of the patients, we do it off pump, but some of them are on pump. And it depends on the training of the team, the disponibility of, 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 all, the, of all the tools, of the, all the things, the cannulas, the oxygenators, everything. It depends on the hemodynamic condition of the patient, how the patient on the offer of femoral cannulation and gives you a, a, a better exposure of the territory that you need to do. Femoral cannulation is our preferred uh, technique and uh, we prefer to do it heart beating instead of, of stopping the, the heart. In terms of the, of our, our conduits, sorry for that. We use the radial artery, as you see in the video, there's a patient in the center of the slide who we harvest the radial artery by two small incisions, uh, two bridge incisions, not as the one that is uh, on the diagram on the top right of the on the top right of the of the slide. That's uh, that's a revision of Dr. Irie Blitz about harvesting the radial artery um, very long years ago. Bar technique is with uh, small incisions in the forearm, as you see in the photo of our patients. What is the ideal in terms of the disponibility and the training and, 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 and all the things that you need to do with this technique? You can have a lot of tools, you can have a lot of retractors as the one you see there, uh, but there is an ultrasound to see how the, 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 bridge, the, the, the bypasses are performing in terms of, of the ultrasound. You can have all the issues of the gadgets you can do, you can have stabilization with minimal invasive techniques that are doing for that. But I think that this is not the ideal. The ideal depends on where you are, what you have, and, and where you want to go. We, we do not have all of these instruments in all of the institutions that we perform surgery. We have in some of them, uh, but I don't know actually at the moment if it is an ideal. That's why there are a lot of question marks. This is our platform. Uh, of course, our platform on the on the left is uh, one of our patients. That was a really high risk patient with with a hepatic transplant, uh, with a hemodialysis, a lot of incisions that you see on the neck, a lot of incisions that you see on the abdomen, uh, and this is it was our first uh, of our first patients because we began this technique by doing on high risk patients. Uh, our platform is a unusual platform uh, as, an, uh, yeah, as you are in an OR, but we use things like video to harvest the right, the left internal mammary artery video assisted and um, do it when you can have a good uh, exposure. There's where you have conventional retractor, as you see on the left of the slide, it's a conventional retractor, it's like a, Pediatric phenokiatic. Beautiful bypass perform. It's a Lima to a lady. This was our first patient, uh, a really high risk patients that we would like to share to you. <clears throat> it's really important in these techniques, the pain management, uh, thoracotomies do harm, do uh, produce more pain than sternotomies on the first days. The first and the second days, it's really important to have a lot of tools to help patients in terms with the pain management.
Francisco, please mute your uh, unmute yourself. I'm okay. Now you're here. Yeah, yeah. Now you are audible. Okay, thank you very much. It was an unstable connection with the Wi-Fi, I think. Uh, this slide shows you our platform. We perform this kind of surgery on palm of the left side. You see all the lines, the arterial and the venous lines that go to the femoral, to the groin, to the left groin of the patient for the femoral cannulation. And we are doing the anastomosis. And on the right side, it's a completely off pump uh, technique with the use of the stabilizer and the positioner of the, the heart positioner and the, and the heart stabilizer for making the, the coverage uh, intervention in, the, in an off pump uh, platform. This is a, a video of, of our platform in, in our in our, in our Oh, are we, we have cameras to everybody just can see everything. Yeah, just, if, if you see it's normal instruments, uh, there's the scrub nose with normal, usual, and really uh, instruments that you could have in, 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 any, in, any, in any institution uh, where you perform cardiac uh, surgery. It was an, an unpump in, it. In, the, in, this, in this case. Cardiac exposure, that's the, a big question that everybody uh, make to us. Can you really expose all the territories that you need to do with these techniques? And the, the answer is yes. What you need to do is to have a lot of patience. Of course, training, of course, a team, but you need to be patient. Because if you're not patient, you are not going to perform these techniques. On the, on the top of the slide, it's the exposure of the descending posterior artery in an off-pump platform um, of, a, of a patient. And with conventional instruments, as you see, we have the pediatric finocchietto. You can have excellent exposition. On the bottom of the slide, it's the LAD, and you can see very, very good, uh, maybe better than you see it in open techniques sometimes. How does patients go after they of the surgery, they go great. They came moving, they came putting uh, their own uh, things. They don't need someone to put their jacket. They don't need someone to give you or to, to help them to walk. They do walk on the, on the week. And on the second week, they are completely functional. Um, in Colombia, our patients are really rural patients and they need to do a lot of tasks and a lot of jobs, uh, physical extenuating jobs. And after the second or third week, they, they are able to do, to do this. Uh, incision sometimes is really beautiful. Sometimes you can just don't see incision. There are no wires. We use not wires because it's, a, it's an sparing sternum technique and it's, it's great. A little bit of numbers. Totally uh, of patients, it's uh, 85 patients. The media, as you see on the top of the lights, is the medium. Of all the age, those are uh, uh, third age patients. The, the the stages of the scores, like the error scores, as you see there, uh, ejection fraction it's about down the fifty percent. Body mass mass index are are fat patients, and the perfusion it's the same times that you use it in a in a sternum and conventional technique. When we gave this article to the, to the organizers. It was December of the 2022. We are having 88, uh, 40, 48 patients. Now on May of 2023, you have 85 patients. And as you see, there are our numbers. They are uh, really good numbers. The re for bleeding is less than 1%. The re-operation, we, we need to do one redo operation of a patient because the anastomosis uh, the, the lima, the left internal anomaly, twists in itself. So we need to redo that anastomosis. We have no neurological events. We have no infection me like mediastinitis, superficial infections. There is a 2.3%. Uh, All of these patients have diabetes, have COP, uh, COP G, hypertension, they are obese, uh, granulomas, 2%, and a foreign body reaction. AFib. 4.7 uh, 
percent. That's a really low number of AFib. Uh, uh, as you see in, in cardiac, in, in the cabbage, it's about 20 to 30 percent. This is 4 percent. Length of stay, it's similar than conventional techniques. That's maybe because we haven't done all our learning cure. Uh, but after the patients go outside, go with out to patients, patients, uh, they have less time to return to the daily activity, to the daily life. They are working in about the third or fourth week versus uh, those patients with uh, conventional techniques in about six or more weeks. <laughs> uh, it causes a lot of pain in the first week, uh, exactly in the second and the third day. But after that, after the second week, patient will have no, no pain. You can do a lot of anastomosis. 100% uh, of the patients have one distal anastomosis and 99% of them with the Lima. Uh, one patient with Rayo, because I, I, when I was taking out that Lima, I just uh, cut it. And that's, that was the problem with that patient. But if you see a third of our patients have more than three distal anastomosis and two thirds of our patients have two uh, distal anastomosis. Uh, that's important to say because you can do a lot of anastomosis as you can expose all the territories with patients and with the training of the team. Uh, the length of stay, in resume, uh, patient, patients go to the intensive care unit about for three or four days. This is part of our beginning of, for learning a uh, cure, but you see there, there's the, the, although the last year from January to December, we're getting down those numbers. That's just learning cure. Um, in the general world, they are about three days and it's about a week of hospitalization after we perform the surgery. Of course, we have complications. These ones, one of the patients that I tell you later, just, if you see there's the left thoracotomy, but that patient going wrong and we have finished doing the surgery on pump uh, by a conventional technique. This is, this is part of, of our job. It's, it's normal. Yeah, so I think we note our conclusions. We believe that the development of these uh, techniques compared with the conventional astronomy have lower rate of complications. Patients do, do recover faster today in life. And uh, we're still offering the advantages that surgical myocardial revascularization, the cabbage have demonstrated over time. We believe that this must be a part of the management and treatment of all the patients with cardiac scan disease. Uh, we would like to show your experience to serve as an example and motivation for others, people in the field, in other parts of the world to develop these techniques and favor patients, uh, the patient experience and the patient results of its lives. Uh, in developing countries with underserved patients, we can do these techniques. It isn't that hard. You just have to have patients and be part of this. And align with the purpose of the conference, these techniques will overcome hindrances, will make a lot of evolutions and, of course, advancements, and should be part of the recent trends in cardiology. Thank you very much.